what, what, year and a half ago or something? Something like that. You came down to Fullerton. I stuck a needle in your leg. We took some muscle out. We spent about a year studying it. And this, my friend, is our result. Nah, we should get there in okay time. Oh good, he's only four minutes away from where we're at because I kind of sort of know where he lives. Starting route to 12722 Millennium Drive. Head southeast on Playa Vista Drive. Go ahead and flex for me one more time. Okay, relax. Yeah. There's no muscle there. Jimmy's done enough of these where he can actually tell the muscle quality as he's got them on the table over there. So. All right, nice and relaxed. There, I'm on. Okay. Hey, feel Mark. Uh, it just, it felt kind of weird, but <laughs> <laughs> it felt like he snatched some muscle from me. It doesn't feel yeah, good, yeah, right? It feels like you robbed it, like you got robbed. <laughs> you got my muscle. Yeah. Just stole your gains, man. Okay, let's see. So basically, we got five solid chunks. This is how I track students, by the way. Mm -hmm. It does kind of feel like, like almost like you just, you know, feel the booty, you know what I mean? It feels like some of the analogies I like are that you can like, 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 you don't feel the skin part of it, you feel more no. inside, you know, yes. more inside your leg. Absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't feel great, but... Boys up. I don't know what just happened. Andy, you mind explaining what this thing is? Go for it. Maybe I should stop <laughs> jamming this jerky <laughs> in my face first, huh? Stop crushing some food. Mm -hmm. Come on. Oh, look at me. <laughs> Sorry. You're just ruining the moment. It's fine. Take your time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So. Well, what, a year and a half ago or something? Something like that. You came down to Fullerton. I stuck a needle in your leg. We took some muscle out. We spent about a year studying it. And this, my friend, is our result of how can we unroll this in a way that makes it nice and pretty. So, we were able to look at a whole bunch of things and find out some of the cool stuff about your muscle. In particular, I'll point you to the bottom middle chart in which we looked at the size of your muscle fibers. And we can see how a normal human looks, a rhinoceros, <laughs> and then one of your muscle fibers on the very top, which you'll note is about 22% larger than a rhinoceros muscle fibers. So, uh, I got the rhino beat. That's something, finally. Exactly. <laughs> Tell Stan and go fuck himself. That's right. <laughs> where are you at, Stan? Where, where are you at?
Let's see I like how my eyes are blacked out right yeah. there. Right. <laughs> well, confidentiality, you know, we can't break that stuff as well. So there's a bunch of actually other cool stuff that we learned. If you want to hold this up. For example, um, if we look over here, you would be the purple. You'd be the elite power lifter. And these are your different muscle fiber types. And you were almost 80% fast twitch, which is exceptionally rare. In fact, about the highest we would ever see, with very little. Uh, in terms of like a, a weakness, what would that mean? Like, does that mean I can't run for shit or something like that, or it'd be it more difficult? Or not necessarily running, but it means you'll be fatigued. It right, means fast. you know, like you're probably used to doing sets of three or less. Right, right. Sound familiar? <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what your training background is, <laughs> or whatever. But yeah, you would probably struggle with, uh, say, CrossFit, perhaps. Like would, not be, would not jump. be your. So, yeah. So, we did a bunch of cool stuff. Um, over here as well, what's called the mononuclear domain. This is actually, I think, is the most interesting finding. So have you guys ever, have you guys studied um, <clears throat> people that have been on PEDs before, or no? Have you not really seen that before? We have not, but several other labs have, and this is uh, extremely consistent with what they find in terms of not this stuff. This is pretty rare, but the last column. Right. So the mononuclei are what control and hold the DNA of the muscle cell. And they control whether it grows, shrinks, dies, repairs. And so the mononuclear domain size is the domain or the amount of area each nuclei controls. Right. So having a smaller domain size means that each nuclei has to control a smaller, control a smaller area, which is a good thing. And so again, you can see normal people here, um, uh, especially like older individuals out there, and, and this is you right there. So incredibly small. Right. I'm not going to tell you what body part you're incredibly small in. I'll let you figure that out at home. Hey, now. We know. He's got two kids. This is big enough. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right? Uh, but it, it's really, really small. And that, again, is what we would see with people with the history of anabolic steroids. Right. So we don't know if it's the training, genetics, steroids, or what role. Right. But it, it's really, really small. And this is probably explaining a lot of why you can handle the type of training that you handle. Right. In addition to other stuff. So we're going to do a bunch more stuff with your fibers. Cool. We're not done yet. But... You this still you still can do more tests on it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it takes a long time. Disintegrate. Can, this little laser thing is about three quarters of a million dollars. Damn. And we get all kinds of stuff like that in it, and so really, um, like one of the things we're looking at now with your fibers are not just how many of these nuclei you have, but the shape of them, right. because that determines the function as well and the contract contractile properties, how much force. Because we didn't get time to do it yet, what we're going to actually do is take the muscle fibers, and effectively we can tie one end uh, to a <coughs> A fixed unit, and then put a force transducer on the other end, mm. which is just like a tendo unit or anything like that. And then we could soak it in a bath of ATP and energy and things, and we can figure out the maximum velocity and power it can contract. Oh, wow. And that's going to be really, really interesting. We just haven't got there yet. There uh, hasn't been many uh, power lifters that you've studied before either, right? We don't have very many, no. So it's, it's a very different thing. In fact, one of the things I want to do is because we have all the tissue from the weightlifters, yeah. I want to compare weightlifters to powerlifters yeah. in terms of things like that, the contractile mobility, because that's never been done really ever. What, we, what can we inject to make this uh, more off the charts? <laughs> 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 I would say, you know, a little bit, uh, actually train hard. That might help. Working you know, out? Like yeah, actually, actually yeah. picking up some of the weights that are in here? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, move them around instead of just keeping this stuff in for visuals. Um, but keeping on the current dosage of special supplements or going back to those. That would be interesting actually to to go through a specific regimen and come back and test yeah, it again. Yeah, and, and see it again. But I, I don't know. I mean, you might be you might be at the point where it's you're at the, kind of the limit. Right. You get to a ceiling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Cool. Well, pretty thank cool you. stuff. Yeah, yeah.